making provisions for your marriage, right? And it was so profound to me because you think you do your vows. These are the things that you say that you can't do, but adding in things that are like, hey, this is a deal breaker Seriously. for me. And it was I like, am continuing in this series of marriage and love and overcoming obstacles, man. I am so honored to have this couple with me today, a couple I love personally, Bravehearts community, let's show some love to Al and Nicole Lockwood. How are y'all doing this evening? Doing great, 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 doing great. Thanks for having us. Yes, definitely. Yes, for sure. I appreciate it. We're going to talk about a bunch of things about love and longevity. How long have y'all been married now? It'll be 15 years in October this year. So, yeah. Ooh, ooh, that's what's up. I yes. love it. <laughs> the couple I had on the other day, they were married for 21 years. And yeah. I remember just knowing them in Cleveland growing up there. And I mean, like one of the uh the lady I interviewed the other day, she went to school with my little sister. And I'm just like, time is flying so fast. It's flying, crazy. It it's flying by. Yeah, right. So I want to jump into this segment because uh 15 years. A lot has occurred in those years. One thing I always talk about with marriages is great marriages are found. I mean, great marriages are built. They're not found, right? Mm -hmm. It takes time. But I want to talk about how did you both meet each other and how did you both know that you were the one? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I can start. Um, we, we've told this a million times. And so each of us has a little bit of a, not a different version, but he likes to share certain parts. Um, so I was married before, um, you know, and divorced and moved back to Missouri, which is my hometown. Um, and at the time my son was three years old. So, um, we moved back to Missouri to be closer to family. And that's, you know, also where I'm from, um, you know, reconnected with some friends that lived there. And, um, one of my friends was a mutual friend of Al's and, um, I had saw Al and I'm like, my gosh, she's so handsome. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, um, he kind of gave him my phone number and, um, Al called and I missed his call and I kept his voicemail for so long because his voice was so nice and his voicemail was so sweet. Um, and we ended up going to the movies and, um, I'll let you go from there. All right, so should I rewind a little <laughs> you bit? You can rewind <laughs> if you want. What movie did y'all go see? <laughs> we went to see Norbit, which yeah. is our favorite yeah. movie now. We used to watch it every year on our anniversary mm -hmm. because, um, you know, um, Norbit's a very funny movie and it was kind of like a random first mm -hmm. date movie. But yeah, Norbit. Yeah, let's do it. Go ahead, Al. So real, real quick, so um, I'm going to rewind just a little bit. So <laughs> originally we met in a barbershop. So there was this one barber, barber in the town that uh, it, it's a small town of 2000 people. The base, Whiteman Air Force Base made made that town pretty much. So anyway, everyone knew this barber and usually like, so I cut my own hair, but like that was one thing when I first went in the military, I was like, I'm gonna learn how to cut my hair because I don't know who's gonna cut it. I'll be moving around. But every now and again, I would go. So I'm trying to speed this up a little bit. So I went to this barber. He wasn't there because he had he had a, um, a bunch of different other jobs. He was just, you know, trying to trying to make it, trying to do things. And he had this woman in the barbershop cutting hair and she had this gentleman in the seat. You know, his hair looked pretty good. I was like, OK, I'll, I'll sit. I wait. So long story short, she messed my hair completely. I like messed it up completely. So I go um, go home. I call the guy. His name is Mike. And he's like. I'll come back, you know, I'll take care of you, you know, for free, you know, and I was like, okay, fine. So go back and I'm sitting in a chair mm -hmm. and this beautiful woman walks in <laughs> and, uh, you know, like slightly, you know, I'm checking her out. She, I think she was checking me out, but we, we didn't know at the time at all. Right. <laughs> so, but it's so funny because we were sitting, you know, we were sitting there talking about my, my bad haircut, you know, from last week, that, that whole situation. And we were laughing and, you know, how Miss Nicole is, she's like, oh, I'm so, you know, I'm so sad, you know, I'm so sorry that, you know, that that happened. So needless to say, that, that brings us back to the part that she said, you know, one of our mutual friends, you know, I think she's seen me on, what's the site back then? MySpace. My, my it was MySpace. It was MySpace, I think. 
<laughs> and that we connected with mutual friends. And she was like, oh, the guy's name was Chris. She was like, oh, Chris, you know, Al. And, you know, and then that's how she wrote, you know, and then we went on our first date. And the part that I always tell on, on our first date is like, we, so the reason why we watched so much of that movie afterwards, because we didn't really watch the movie yeah. during, in the movie theater. We talked a lot, you know, the entire time, trying yeah. to get to know each other. I always jump in the code because it felt like she was getting closer to me. Like the movie seats are so close to my know. arm. We were sharing and he says that I was yeah, like trying I'm to pretty sure on. she was like waiting, getting closer, you know, so I thought that was pretty funny. But um, yeah, and then that's all she wrote after that. We had yeah. that date and had another date. And I think after the third date, we were like, yeah. But we were together every day yeah. since then. And so yeah. when we when we went to the movies, he told me that he already had orders to Korea yeah. for a year. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, like this is that's bad news. You know, yeah. we just met like we connected. And he already told me that he was going to Korea. Um, and so, you know, I, I remember calling my mom. My mom's like, hey, just enjoy yourself. Like, he seems like a nice person, you know. And so we were together every day yeah. until he left for Korea. Yeah. Um and then he went to Korea and then I went to Korea to go visit him for two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, um, went and visited him and spent two weeks mm -hmm. there. And, um, he asked me if, you know, we wanted to move to Arizona, mm -hmm. um, once he got back, cause he was, his follow on was Luke for space. And, you know, I grew up where, you know, you didn't shack up. So instantly I said, no, I was like, we're just going to have to do a long distance relationship. And he had done that before and, and it didn't go very well. So he's kind of like, I really don't want to do that. And so, you know, we just kind of really came to the middle and I decided, you know, I, I wanted to be with him. So we, um, he got back and we packed up the U-Haul and we moved to Arizona and then we got married a few months later. So we did shack up a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. Just a tad, yeah. few months. <laughs> that is funny. So first date, real quick. First date, y'all go to the movies. Y'all go in the movies and talk throughout the whole we movie. Did. We did. And so I'm from there and there's a Mexican restaurant that is my favorite. And we were supposed to go there, but Al had a little bit of an upset stomach. Yeah. So we had to skip dinner. <laughs> and we laugh about that too, yeah. because I know it now. And I'm like, yep, that makes sense. But no, we did. We just talked. Um, his birthday is April the 4th. Mine is April the 10th. And then Carlton's, my son, is April the 22nd. So we're like, oh my gosh, like there was just so many things that we couldn't stop talking about that we really weren't focused on the movie. We were really just kind of getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. mm. How old is Carlton now? 20. 20 years old. He literally just left today. He did. He was home this weekend, <laughs> yeah. 20 years old. So, I mean, you know, and, you know, that's funny that you asked that because in the perspective of our relationship, Carlton was three when we met. And, um, you know, uh, so we just kind of, that's always a perspective of how long we've been together mm -hmm. and, you know, how old he's getting by just our relationship in general. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause I remember seeing him. He was a little dude I, in church. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh my God, how time flies. I'm getting out. I, I should have got tissues. I'm going to like, I told myself I was going to cry through this bitch. Just, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all, good. Yeah, right? Y'all still young. Y'all look good. Yes. So to everybody that's watching this, y'all got to make sure, or if you're listening to this on podcast, you got to watch the video because this is a beautiful couple right here. They, yes. <laughs> they look So it's one of my favorites. Uh, now let's talk about, I want to go, uh, uh, about tough seasons because we all have them right y'all know me um before <laughs> my divorce right like when we all first met we first met I was previously married um hence the rebranding uh mm -hmm. you know and, and and I've been very transparent about with that and our marriage and stuff like that because we were married 15 years and divorce you know mm -hmm. So I guess the running joke is we were we were able to help other couples stay together. We couldn't stay together. <laughs> That's our running joke. So, um, but anyway, tough season. How did you get through it? And and let's talk about it because we all have them. Tough seasons in marriage. Well, it's funny you say that because you did help us right during our tough season. So we were at Arizona. You know that was our base. Um, I got deployed in two thousand nine the end of 2009, about September of 2009. And, you know, I had a uh, committed adultery pretty much over there and um, came back and, you know, Nicole found out. So this brought us to, you know, kind of like a ties. It was, what, 
a year we were a, pretty much a year into our um our marriage and you know just not knowing what to do how to do when to do i mean she knew a little bit cuz she you know she was married before and me you know when we were in 27 26 27 then um just like you know it it was a very sad situation you know that i regret completely and um so needless to say we got you know we got online. I, I think Nicole got online and we, we found church kingdom in the Valley and we, we were watching the pastor still. Um, and, um, well, both of them pastor stills. Um, and, um, we were just watching and it's so funny that we found a, a marriage series that they were doing, or it, it was a previous one, but we were just watching it and we were like, wow, this church seems pretty awesome. Um, you know, just looking into it, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, Nicole was like, I think that was the Saturday, right? And Nicole was like, we're going, you know, so, you know, try and fix our marriage, see, see what we could do, you know. And I never grew up in a church like that. I went with my friends, you know, here and there. Um, but I never really actually grew up in a church. So uh, it's like, all right, you know, whatever, you know, whatever you want, whatever we could do to fix this marriage, you know. And then um, we went to church and we found you and Miss Lundina and, uh, you know, and, you know, Lisa say you guys helped us so much, you know, throughout the whole time. And um, I'll turn it over to Nicole. Yeah, um, I think just to rewind a little bit, you know, um, when I found out, you know, I instantly was like, deuces, like I'm out. I had just left a seven year marriage, you know, that involved the same thing. And I just was like, this is not my restart. Um and I remember calling my mom at like two o'clock in the morning and I was crying and I'm like, mom, I can't believe this. And my mom said, you know, they call me Nikki. She was like, Nikki, you don't want to hear this, but she was like, I know that you love him. And I froze. I froze because I didn't want to hear that, but it was so true and it was so profound, you know? Um, so it was allowed, it, it allowed me to stop and get my thoughts together and really, um, focus on that specific sentence. So that's when we got on the computer and, you know, I grew up in church, right? I know, I know all the things. And so that's when he said, like, we're going to church. I'm like, there's nothing else that's going to save us, but that, right. Um, so it wasn't like, I didn't ask him, I'm like, we're going, you know? And so, um, it wasn't by accident that, you know, Pastor Still and Pastor Kelly had shared the things that happened in their marriage. And we were right there in the thick of our feelings. And so, you know, we, we went and, um, you know, we went to the altar call and just, you know, by accident, we were, you guys, you guys took us and I'm all snot crying, <laughs> like not anything that looked pretty. And we were broken, right? Like, and and I think to me, this full circle of us doing this with you is you saw us at our absolute worst. There's n There hasn't been another moment in our marriage that we've experienced like that before. So for you to see us then and to see us 15 years later, thriving, four kids later, you're like, God is good, you know? And so I think, you know, um, yeah, like that. And we haven't experienced anything else to that capacity, right? So I think when you know better, you do better. Um, and um, we've allowed ourselves to get through that. And um, it is now a part that we can look at and, and talk about without crying and without being angry um, because God restored every part of um, our lives. And I say our lives because in uncovered things in his individual life and in mine, um, we, you know, we're trying to conceive our first child during that time. And, you know, I had a miscarriage. So not only did I have to go through my husband, you know, um, cheating, we lost a baby, which we had been trying to, and, you know, other elders, you know, were helping us through that. So like, when you talk about getting knocked down, like God got our attention in so many ways, um, that we don't ever want to be in that place again. Yeah. Amen yeah. to that. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, you guys, yeah. Y'all almost got me in tears. I'm not going I, to. I'm trying to choke up. Like, I want my eyelashes <laughs> to fall out. Like, you know, but it is like, I think for me, and I, I've really shared, you know, with, we don't go around and like 
hey, like we had this in our marriage, but like God has always put in our heart where we'll meet a couple who's going through something and we share it and it gives them hope. You know, I think the best part of us is our transparency, you know? And there's also been people that, you know, I, I don't share it with because, you know, you, judgment is real. And I don't want anyone to put a label on my husband and that he's this horrible person. Um, but you know, um, we are that percentage of those that looked past the situation and trusted God in every part of us, you know, and we had to pull back from friendships and, you know, friend groups to really focus. And that was very necessary to, um, I mean, we gave up our music. Like we literally went, um, full throttle in our faith to be able to get centered back to where we needed to be in order to just eliminate whatever was going on around us that we had to pull away from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I, I just, for some, I, I just always felt a genuine love for I, just seeing the love for each each other and being connected to y'all, I was like, this couple is, it, there's love here. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So Absolutely. I was just like, to, so to see y'all today, I'm just like, yeah. So yeah. Praise yeah. God. I'm just happy. Absolutely. That we're able to have this conversation. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, so let's, uh, I want to talk, I want to ask y'all this individually. Nicole, ladies first, what is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? I, I believe the biggest mistake is the first instinct is to run, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think we feel that judgment of, girl, you stayed with him and he did that versus really looking at, okay, well, he did this and this is what I see next, right? Seeing past the situation, seeing past the hurt. And again, if it wasn't for my mom, you know, to, to be that person, um, to confirm that feeling, you know, I didn't have, um, someone in my circle telling me, girl, bye, like leave. I didn't have that. And so I, again, you know, circling myself, my, my family is, is faith, you know, based and my friend circles. And so at that time I didn't have a single person telling me to leave him, you know, and it wasn't that, you know, um, they were telling me what I wanted to hear because I was out. Like, I think I had halfway packed <laughs> Mm -hmm. my stuff yeah. um to leave and that's just being real and honest right now and so for me um you know going to iron sharpens iron right we don't want someone to be giving us advice only during the good right i want someone to give me sound advice when i need to hear what i need to hear not what i want to hear mm -hmm. and that's a true friend absolutely yeah. you know friend. Mm -hmm. absolutely Al, what is the biggest mistake you see men make in relationships? I mean, it kind of piggybacks off of what Nicole said too. Um, just no, just knowing when to stick with it, you know what I mean, um, and not going down that path of like continuing to do the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly type thing. You mm -hmm. you want to try and mend your relationship. You want to try, and this doesn't just go for like cheating or anything like that. This you know for everything. It's it's almost like um, argument and stuff like that. You have to know you know, what to say, when to say, how to say it, you know, especially, you know, you know, they always use the phrase happy wife, happy life. <laughs> but at the same time, it should be both, right? Everyone should be happy. So you just have to know, you know, like going down the right path and just sticking through it. And like, um, for me, like, seek God, because like I said, I've never grew up in a church, you know, and um, I've got, you know, here and there, you know, like I said, with my, uh, family members every now and again or with friends but like just knowing knowing what I know now you know starting starting that kingdom and then you know so on and so forth like without God you know none of this would have been possible so like for the men I would definitely you know tell them like please you know like stick with it and find you a church find you a good group of men you know men of God that, that's going to help you throughout the, your your situation whatever you're going through. Mm -hmm. Because during that season of, of Kingdom of, in the Valley, when we were all there, I, I just think it was something special during that time. It really was. It really was. It's Man. like seasons, you know, like we always say, like you're in, you're in this time for a certain season, you know. So it's like um, it was definitely a good season to be in, you know. Yeah. So um, just to be there. I mean, the situation, not so good, but 
order to get us there, it was amazing. So mm -hmm. I, I totally agree. Um, Nicole, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? So um, my parents had the picture perfect relationship. Um, and then they decided to get a divorce or to tell me they were getting divorced, um, after I graduated from high school and, you know, I was shocked, um, at the time. So my parents decided to, you know, uh, get a divorce, um, after I graduated from high school. And, you know, one of the things in, you know, my profession as a guidance counselor is like, you hear kids that are really shocked about that. Um, but it really tore me up to be 18 and my parents were like, Hey, like we're going to split. And, you know, um, I never saw them fight. I never saw them argue. Um, and so it wasn't until we started going to kingdom, you know, that, you know, pastor, pastor still and pastor Kelly would always preach like, Hey, let your kids, you know, see you disagree. Let your kids like, you know, see affection because I didn't, I didn't see the good or the bad, right. My parents were not affectionate, um, you know, with like the lovey dovey stuff. Um, and they really didn't show the, they didn't tell us or we didn't talk about the bad. So it was a little bit of a shocker to me and, um, their divorce wasn't the best. Um, unfortunately my dad, you know, um, went back to Detroit where he's from. And then, you know, my mom was in Missouri and, you know, because divorces get pretty yucky. Um, you know, my dad didn't really speak to, you know, my sister and I for about 14 years. Um, and then as an adult, you know, um, you know, I had to let my dad know that what happened between them happened to them and that I loved him. Um, and so we kind of rekindled when I moved here and I went to Detroit and saw him and, you know, um, and my dad passed away three years ago, you know? So it's like, you know, as an adult now, and you, you have a parent, you, your parents, you know, do the best that they can. And then, you know, as an adult, I have chosen to take the things that I thought my parents did very well and bring it into my marriage and the things that are not so good. I'm like, okay, we're not doing this. We're not doing that. So, you know, for the most part, you know, they were amazing parents, you know, um, that, you know, really kind of gave a blueprint as to, um, how to be, my dad was the most amazing provider, you know? So I think, you know, when, when I look at Al, like I just was always surrounded by strong men, um, you know, so that's something that I always, you know, compare, you know, to him, um, but you know, I can't, I can't complain by how I was raised. Mm, that's a blessing. Yeah. Um, Al, from seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Wow. So then this is a, this is a big one for me. So, I mean, starting off, I guess, you know, I thought my parents had a, you know, good relationship. My, my, my dad was the, you know, he worked, my mom was just a housewife, but my mom was like on the scale of house, like what I see throughout my childhood, like it was like back Wilma, the Flintstone, like she would do everything, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, like just growing up throughout, throughout and knowing a little more and seeing more. It's like, my dad don't really do anything but work, come home and eat. You know what I mean? Like he, he wouldn't really like, uh, he wasn't a, like, he wasn't really an affectionate dad or anything like that. You know, we kind of got that from my mom. Um, and it was, it was just me and my sister. My sister's three years older than me. But um, so, and then, you know, fast forward, you know, they're still together, but they're not together. My dad, like, so he retired, like, he did 27 years in the Army Reserve, regular Army and National Guard, and um, went to Iraq, just mine, like, so I think he's, right now he's diagnosed with bipolar, like, all types of stuff, like, he's just... He's just struggling mentally. Yeah, he's, mentally, he's struggling, lost two houses, you know, one when I was pretty much right before I was going into the military, you know, um, he, uh, lost that house, just, just, just doing, I don't want to say dumb stuff, but like, you know, of course, when you're in that manic stage and your mental is not correct, you know, um, you do, you do things that doesn't make sense, you know, and I lost a house, you know, then I went in the military. I, you know, just all types of stuff. I could go on and on, like identity theft, you know, like, cause I'm a junior and, you know, so all he needed was my social and, you know, I had to take emergency leave one time to, um, what do you call it? Um, voluntary repossess a vehicle that he bought in my name all types of stuff so anyways um so like i said they're together but they don't live together my dad he, he goes from house to house you know all types of stuff so it's a very sad situation i try to do what i can to 
got him in the hospital a few times, but of course with mental health, you know, if the person doesn't say like, hey, you know, something's wrong, <clears throat> excuse me, something's wrong with me, or I want help, you know, if they don't ask for it, they're not going to, they'll keep you to 72 hours, and then they'll send you on your way, pretty much, and we try multiple times, but anyway, so what I've learned from that is basically not to do what they do at all, you know, and um, I do struggle with that, you know, and just learning with Nicole, and she helps me out a lot to kind of see, like, yeah, you probably learned this from your dad, this type of behavior probably came from your dad, you know, type thing, and and I think not so much one I mean like not so much as learning from his dad but because his parents are older you know back then that generation was very much like the woman takes care of that and he was the worker and you know um so just picking up those tendencies not so much as you get that from your dad but if that was all that you witnessed in your house Mm -hmm. you know that's all that you have to go off of so just pointing out things but I think for me at the beginning, you know, we have two different spectrums of how we were both, what we saw. Mm -hmm. And, um, one of the things that I remember elder tremble sharing with us, because we did home builders and, um, um, making provisions for your marriage. Right. And it was so profound to me because you think you do your vows. These are the things that you say that you can't do, but adding in things that are like, Hey, this is a deal breaker for me. And it was like, so, powerful that he said that because you don't think of that um when you're going you know when you're going into a marriage versus there are some things that are just not in the bible or things that you're like hey like this is very very important to me and if you break this like this is this is the thing so you know um you know, putting in things like that. I am an amazing mother, but I am not domesticated. So hearing him and seeing his mom being so domesticated, I don't measure up to his mom. Right. And so for Al to have grown up with this mom who clips toenails, I ain't doing that baby. Like that is not going to I don't to want to, I promise. <laughs> but it helps me to see the perspective of it. what I think mm-hmm. his mom and his dad is just, oh my gosh, that will never happen. Mm-hmm. I had to put myself in the perspective of, hey, what do you see in a wife? Like being that you grew up and you saw your mom do this to your dad, what do you want from me? And then going from there to say, okay, I can I can maybe do that. I can do this. But we did. We had to talk about it because, again, like I didn't see my mom doing any of that for my dad. And that wasn't right or wrong. But, um, you know, we had to get on the same page Mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, Yeah. I I agree, because I think sometimes we don't two things we don't discuss is our boundaries. When we get into Mm -hmm. it, we don't discuss boundaries because we we might lose somebody. Yeah. And then we don't discuss because I always tell people. Uh, you can't, you can extend grace to someone when you understand their backstory. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Cause I was going to ask you, Al, like how did that switch from seeing your mom being a housewife to having a wife that works a full-time job and got kids? Mm-hmm. Like, how was that for you mentally? So it's funny you say that because like, I am domesticated. Yes. He's <laughs> so, very domesticated. Like I do like pretty much, you know, I don't do all the cleaning, but I, I wash the clothes, you know, do all that good stuff. But um, so, I mean, it wasn't, I guess, I don't know. It wasn't too bad. Mm-hmm. We we both kind of share a majority of it. But like I said, I am domesticated. So I don't, I don't, I don't look for her to be like, Hey, why didn't you do this? Or, Hey, why didn't you do that type thing? So it wasn't a bad of a switch. I think it's more so on the, uh, on my dad's side to where like what I did see, you know, like, and, and that's what Nicole was talking about a little bit, but um, that was one thing that we, you know, and, and you know, th- things come up daily every now and again and stuff like that. So, and we know what to do and how to do it and we fix it. So. Yeah. And he loves, he loves, he washes the clothes, <laughs> he grocery shops, yeah. like he knows the price of milk. I don't. So yeah, I would one, say like, here. Mm-hmm. but I say like, and, and I think this is one of the things where you talk about like what you do right and what you do wrong. Like, mm-hmm. I think if Al could tell you, like, there's so many moments where I'm like, man, I'm so thankful that you mm-hmm. know this. I'm so thankful that you love to do this. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, um, we are like, he's like the calm to me mm-hmm. and like, we compliment each other in the areas that we don't have you know so um I was very thankful you know for him and I always credit his dad right like I have vocalized to his dad multiple times I'm like thank you for raising such 
a caretaker and a manly man. If there is in Florida, we have these palmettos. So they're like Florida's cockroaches. They're like little dinosaurs with wings. <laughs> and Al will go over and, and like, we'll be freaking out. And he'll go and he'll get it. And he says, like, what you don't realize is that, well, like, I'm I'm kind of scared too. But like, if you talk to me or our kids, like Al is the, he is the strong, fearless person. So I have told his dad that multiple times that, that he has raised him to be such a powerful, like, um, figure in our house where no one's scared when he's here, you know? So in that aspect, you know, watching his dad be that to them, like, you know, I appreciate that part of it. Mm, that's beautiful. It is. I, I love that. Uh, yeah. Cause there's a story I want to tell, but I guess I'll say it for a later time. <laughs> <laughs> this is about y'all. Um, but yeah. I, I do wash dishes and I wash clothes and stuff too. So I, I yes. mean, yeah, because yeah. we got to make it work in this household. You got to, you got to do what's best for you on your household. Yes. You what yeah. people say yeah. and what a woman yeah. should do. Mm-hmm. Do yeah. what works for you. Yes. And it's, cool. fun, it's funny you say that, Sean, because like, you know, we'll be around other couples and they'll tell Nicole like, oh, you don't, you know, because she, she'll tell you to this day, she'll know how to wash clothes. It's not that she never learned. I mean, well, I guess she never really learned. I didn't have to. You didn't have mm-hmm. to, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it works for us. It Just does. like what you said, you know, whatever works for you, you do it. You yeah. Know? So, so I never have yeah. a problem with it at all. We don't. Like, people will yeah. think that, like, and we're like, that's just how our marriage yeah. has mm-hmm. worked out. And so we meet each other where they are. Mm-hmm. It made me think of it because we love um, the best man and the best man holiday. Right. And like, it's like, we could probably recite every word, <laughs> but you know, I think it was the second one where they talked about the, you know, the 80, 20. Right. And, and we, we feel like if there's a month that I can only give 30, like, Hey, like Al's going to pick it up. And so we don't believe in that 50, 50 thing, you know, in our finances, in what we give physically. And so that started day one, you know, um, because in my previous marriage, like we had separate bank accounts, we had like our cars were in separate names and I didn't want to have that. It was very mental to me, you know, going into this marriage and everything was so compartmentalized. So that was something that was real strong that we were like, Hey, first day, like, this is what we're not going to do. And we were both on the same page mm-hmm. about it. Mm, I love it. Do y'all know who Br- Brene Brown is? Mm-hmm. Brene Brown. She does a lot of stuff on, um, uh like vulnerability and stuff like that anyway Mm -hmm. very popular woman but i was watching a tiktok from hers and she said one key for one key that works for her marriage is whenever her or her her husband comes home they say babe i'm only operating on 30 percent today Mm -hmm. so when they get in the house they already know they're not expecting you're not expecting Mm -hmm. al to wash the clothes because al come in the house and he says babe i only got 30 percent yeah 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 so we yeah, I love that. that. Yeah, absolutely. We we um that's good. One thing that we do is, you know, like my job is always there's there's always, you know, something and it's very um emotionally taxing sometimes to spend a day just hearing all the bad. And so one of the rules that we put into place was we would not come into the house and bring Brooke into the house. So there's been times where I'm sitting in the driveway, finishing up a phone call with him to tell him about my day. Because when I stepped in, like I wanted to be present, not only for the kids, but for him too. So that was something that we put into place to be able to just be present in our home, to leave work at the door. Um, you know, my dad was military and his dad was, and, you know, military is never ending. It's never, it never stops. And so, you know, um, it, it's very hard to not bring that home. And, and we'd be lying to say that, you know, the military doesn't value the spouse and the family, you know? So those are things that we work through as well that, you know, my dad, if he deployed, like my mom was it, you know, and my mom took care of us and my dad didn't even think about my mom and all the sacrifices, you know? So that was something, you know, with us being, you know, a family of six, like four kids and, you know, I'll thug it out and not let him know that I'm suffering, you know, because that's just my personality, but, you know, always recentering ourselves back to each other, you know, has been very important, you know, um, you know, and when we decided we knew that we wanted to have three kids, you know, of our own, you know, one of the promises that we made to each other was that we weren't going to lose ourselves in that. So if we go and we have like a little drink and we come back home, like we at least try to do that once a week, um, to still, 
be tapped into each other, you know, so our marriage doesn't do what my parents did, you know, Carlton left, but we saw the littles, but you know, a lot of parents leave or their kids leave and parents are looking at each other like, hi, who are you? What's your name? Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, that was one of the things that my parents, my dad said, my dad felt like my mom put my sister and I before him and he didn't feel, he didn't feel seen and he felt neglected. And my mom wanted to be a mom from the time that she, you know, grew up, she always wanted to be a mom and she was an amazing mom, but she forgot about her husband and it sadly, you know, ended in divorce. And so I, would be lying to you if I, you know, was guilty about that because I saw my mom do it. Right. Mm-hmm. We're talking about marriage. I saw my mom do it. And, you know, and then I had to re rewind, like, you know, cause we serve our kids first and I'm supposed to serve my husband, you know? So there was a lot of like, rewind, let me do this right. You know, but just acknowledging it in that moment, like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And, you know, mm-hmm. but just being present, um, to not, you know, make the same mistakes again. I, I agree. That is, yeah, that's, that's a, that's a show within itself. Yeah. We, we, we'll, we'll talk about Sign that. Us up. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. We're going to, yeah, because we have two kids together and, uh, you know, my wife and I, and both of our boys have autism. So now here oh. it is. And, and, I, and look, I'm starting over, right. I'm like, I'm, I'm 46 with little kids and diapers. I'm like, damn, we get yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and and that's an episode within itself, but I, I would like to talk about that later with kids and prioritizing a spouse. Absolutely. A lot of couples struggle with that. Um, question. Is it easier? No right or wrong answer. Al, is it easier to love yourself or someone else? I'm going to say someone else, I okay. think. Okay. Because a lot of times, I know me and Nicole will go not back and forth, but um, I feel like I do a lot of things like for someone else, you know, rather than for me, you know what I mean? And, and I, you know, I'm very easy laid back. So I'm like, I don't need a lot, you know, type thing. So I, I think I would much rather make sure this person, Nicole is taken care of. And then I'm like, all right, I'll, t- I- I'll take care of myself on the back end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I feel that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nicole, is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Um, I'm in a journey of, of, self-care right I lost my dad three years ago and it um gosh here we go um it has rocked my world um and I have allowed Al to love me and see me in my worst you know um sorry um the worst part of my life and so because I always took care of everyone and my kids and you know my husband that I had to start finding things to do um, for me. So, you know, I've, I've been on the other side where I can, I can love, um, I think even now, gosh, I will probably do both at the same time, but I've been on this journey of, um, loving me and getting myself through this time, um, so that I can be healthy to be a, a you know, a great wife and, and a great mom at the same time. Mm-hmm. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I, I, I love it. This is, transparency yeah. at its finest and, yeah. and Nicole it's funny you say that because my wife now is in this journey where she's starting to do stuff for herself because she's the oldest of six yeah and she's always raising and helping other people yeah oh so when it comes to her trying to help herself or do something for herself she's like what am I going to do because I'm used yeah. to taking everybody else yeah so I I get that Last question. This is bonus. Which is hardest for you to say, Al? Is it A, I apologize, B, I need help, C, I love you, D, I was wrong? Which is the hardest for you to say? What was B again? B <laughs> was I need help. Yeah, I think that's the hardest. Because I apologize a lot, I think. All right. <laughs> um, I, think I think it's, it's, it's very hard for me to say I need help. I, and I, you know, I hate to say manly man, right? Mm-hmm. But um, I think overall, it's very hard for a man to say like, or let someone know, especially his wife or someone of that nature, like, hey, I need help, you know, like, or, whether it's finances, whether it's 
you know, anything, you know, something emotionally like, hey, I need help with this, you know. I think that that's kind of hard. Um, I do. I guess I, I do it sometimes, you know, but um, out of those four, I would say that would be the hardest one. Mm. Which is the hardest for you, Nicole? I apologize. I need help. I love you. I was wrong. Which is the hardest? I would, um, I would say, which it's funny, I would say um, the health part. Um, I think I do not strive to be superwoman, but I will, I will do it all and not ask for help. Um, and that's probably a flaw in our marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Because we will like have phone calls, um, where we have not asked each other for help with something or some details have gotten lost in the shuffle. And we're like, Hey, like, like we got to get this together. Like 15 years of marriage, we don't have these communication issues Mm -hmm. and we'll figure it out. But, um, we, um, we both struggle in that area to utilize each other. And, you know, my mom lives here where we live. She lives actually a mile and a half away from us. And she always reminds us like, y'all are over there trying to do it all. Like I am here to help you. So that's kind of funny that we both picked the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we both are really good about apologizing, right? Whether it's through, like, I I laughed because he said he apologized a lot. (laughs) Oh, we'll send me a five-page text of, all the things he, he's sorry for after the fact. And I respect it, right? Um, and we tell each other, we love each other, like, I would say multiple times a day. Um, we're good at those things. But, um, you know, communicating and, and, and kind of being vulnerable with what we're struggling in, it's a work in progress. And it's funny you say that because... I, I find that a lot of couples and even married couples struggle with this. So, you know, my whole thing is because I struggle with it, too, because um, my wife and I, we like to kind of outserve each other. So I'm like, I'll try to be Superman. And I'm like, go and relax. She's like, no, but you can't be Superman because Superman gets tired. Superman running the kryptonite. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Very you true. know what I'm saying? So this I need help. And I think it's just a level of vulnerability that we have to be open with mm-hmm. because we're going to get older and we're going to really need that help. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. we might as well start training each other now and saying, I need yeah. it. But I yeah. think too, like we, we don't really realize like what degree of help people need. I remember like, I am such a planner and I'm organized and, you know, after my dad had passed, you know, I was struggling and, you know, I've been in therapy every week for the last three years. And so I remember like my mom and my stepdad and Al, like if it's somebody's birthday, they're like, Hey, Nikki, do you have the cake? Do you have this? And I had to say like, Hey, like right now, like I need y'all's help. Right. And it wasn't until I said it out loud that my stepdad was like, well, I'm really sorry. Like we look at you for everything Mm -hmm. and not even being aware that you are struggling. And so again, because, you know, my profession is to talk to people about the things that I'm currently struggling in. You know, we, I think we react when someone asks for help, we have to assume the worst versus they're just asking for, you know, some extra time or they're asking for this. And so I think we're not used to people being vulnerable to talk about, you know, the bad that it is like shocking when somebody shares that and then they, it makes them not want to ask for help anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's coming from, you know, someone who, who deals with that, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I agree because that's an episode within itself too. I want to talk. <laughs> I'm gonna write your script, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I, we we need that one because I think it's a blessing when you can say, "Al, I need your help," and Al comes through. Yeah, and I think it just helps mesh the relationship. I think it makes it stronger because you you opened up to your spouse because everybody don't deserve that part of you. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think, you know, when my dad passed away, like it was, I mean, for, for him, you know, to, you know, I think you lost your wife for a little bit. Right. And I think, you know, getting to the other side of it, you know, um, it, it, it has strengthened us, you know, because we had never experienced that, you know, with each other. And so to see your wife, like not get out of the bed for two weeks and not take a shower and, you know, like there, there was that, 
that there was that. And so by me getting to a place where I couldn't even help myself, like he had to help me, you know, mm-hmm. See, he had to help me. That's good. Oh my God. This has been a wonderful segment. <laughs> oh my God. I need to release no. this video like now because it is phenomenal. <laughs> so much wisdom and, and, and nuggets in this. I want to thank you, first of all, for both just for being transparent. Um, Y'all will always be a part of my life and my journey. Mm -hmm. Um, So that makes it just that much more interesting. Anybody who's watching this, who's listening to this, if you listen to this via podcast, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you leave a rating and review. By doing so, it leaves you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card who doesn't like free stuff. So make sure you leave a rating and review by listening to this via podcast. If you are watching this via YouTube, make sure you share this with someone because marriages are thriving out here. Don't get it twisted. I don't care what social yeah, media say. This is why I'm dropping this series because I know these people and healthy marriages do exist. So make sure you share this with someone. You just never know who might be in need. Somebody might need help. So help them. <laughs> yes. Nicole and Al, thank you so much for taking time thank out you. of day. I we appreciate, appreciate it. this. Love you. Yes. For sure. Always love. Thank you so much, Brave Arts community. Make sure you leave a comment below. We'd love to hear uh, in the comment section, what was the biggest takeaway in this uh, segment of the show? I would like to know how Al and Nicole was able to help in this segment. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here. But anyway, go watch another video. Thank you.